A reversible reaction is one in which reactants can turn into products and products can turn back into reactants often at the same time. Acid dissociation is one example of a reversible reaction. Of course, not all reactions are reversible. Combustion of a cat, for example, is not an example of a reversible reaction. But here we have nitrous acid ionizing into hydrogen ion and nitrite ion and, as you can tell by the double arrow, at the same time we have hydrogen ion and nitrite ion recombining to form nitrous acid molecules. Equilibrium is reached when the rates of those two processes are equal. In a nitrous acid solution we would expect some number of HNO2 molecules, some number of H plus ions, and some number of NO2 minus ions. Since this is a weak acid, nitrous acid is a weak acid, we would expect many more neutral HNO2 molecules. So let's just pretend, using this picture at the bottom of the screen, that we have 15 HNO2 molecules, and then over here on the right, we have a single one of those that has ionized into the hydrogen ion and the nitrite ion. Equilibrium means that at the next instant there will still be a ratio of 15 neutral HNO2 molecules for every one that has ionized. But it's not necessarily going to be the same HNO2 that has ionized every instant. You can see now the screen has changed. The one on the right has reconnected to form HNO2 and now it's the one in the lower right that is ionized. And this is what's happening all the time at equilibrium. Equilibrium is reached when the concentrations of reactants and products cease changing with time. In other words, the rates at which reactants are turning into products and products are turning back into reactants are equal. Equilibrium does not mean that the amount of the reactants is equal to the amount of products. Typically for equilibrium the system has to be closed. It is a dynamic process although it might look static. Let's take this bad analogy which is one of my teaching strengths to try and illustrate this idea of equilibrium. We have here an unfortunate fellow who has a hole in his boat and is having to bail water. Let's pretend that all we can see is the level of water in the boat. We don't really see the dude bailing. We don't really see water coming in. We just see that the water level is at a certain point in his boat. And ten minutes later we look back and the water level hasn't changed and we say, huh, the water level hasn't changed in 10 minutes, I guess nothing is happening. If we were able to ask the dude, is anything happening? He would say, uh, yeah, something's happening. I've been bailing here for the last 10 minutes. And we say, oh, sorry. All I saw was the level of water in the boat and it hadn't changed, so I, I guess I just thought nothing was happening. That's kind of how an equilibrium system is. Reactants are constantly turning into products, and products are constantly turning back into reactants, but because the concentrations of all of the substances aren't changing over time, it looks to us, from a macroscopic point of view, as if nothing's happening. For the reaction A turning into B and B turning back into A, equilibrium can be reached starting with either lots of A, in other words, lots of reactant, and very little product or with quite a bit of product and not nearly as much reactant. Eventually we will reach an equilibrium where the amounts of A and B cease changing with time. Let's try to illustrate this with a few quick bar graphs. We have initially in one case lots of reactant and almost no product. Eventually if this reaction is reversible will reach some sort of equilibrium, which in this case happens to be roughly 25% reactants and 75% products. 
If we start with another case with lots of product and almost no reactant, eventually that system will reach equilibrium. And you can see that if we chose the amounts of substances correctly, that the equilibrium system that's reached on the right here, when we start with lots and lots of product, is identical to the equilibrium system that we reach on the left if we start with lots of reactant. If we were to start with half and half, again we would reach the same equilibrium. And if we were to start with, say, 10% reactant and 90% product, we would eventually reach the same equilibrium. Now this is a bit simplified, but I'm just trying to get you to understand that you don't have to always start with reactant. You can start with any combination of reactants and products, and that system will eventually reach equilibrium. Here's another way of looking at it. If we start with lots of reactant and little or no product, the initial rate of the forward reaction will be high. The initial rate of the reverse reaction will be low. At equilibrium, the rates are equal, but the amounts generally aren't. You can see in the upper graph, the rate of the forward reaction initially is very high. The initial rate of the reverse reaction is fairly low. And again, this is for a case when we start with lots of reactant and almost no product. As time goes on, the rate of the forward reaction is going to decrease as we form more and more products. The rate of the reverse reaction is going to increase as we form more and more reactants. And at equilibrium, which is right here where this purple line starts, the rates of the forward and reverse reaction are the same. You can see in the bottom graph, for this particular case, they've shown that at equilibrium, there are actually more products. There might be a larger mass of product and a smaller mass of reactant, which is typical, but amounts will not be changing with time. Let's summarize chemical equilibrium. One, in a reversible reaction, a reaction can proceed from either direction, that is, reactants to products and or products back to reactants. The forward and reverse reactions often take place simultaneously. Two, Chemical equilibrium is reached when the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse. At this point, the concentrations of all substances cease changing with time. Equilibrium does not mean the system contains a 50-50 by mass mixture of reactants and products. 3. Equilibrium is a dynamic, not a static process. And 4. We generally do not have to start with just reactants to reach equilibrium. Many initial values of reactant and product amounts can result in a similar equilibrium state.